What's going on guys? Today's video, we are again working on this Hellcat 6.2 liter V8 supercharged Hemi. If you guys haven't seen the last few episodes, uh, you'll have to get caught up to speed, but essentially we took apart this used Hellcat engine just to go through it before it ends up ultimately going into this pickup truck. So it's going into this Dodge Ram 1500 uh, two-door truck. You know, some people don't like to call it a Dodge, but I don't know, it's got a Dodge engine, so, and it's a Ram and it's an FCA product, so. Whatever you want to get into on that. Real quick overview, a recap. We've got the heads here completely dismantled. We cleaned them all out. We've got all the valves out. Uh, I've got new valve seals to go in. We're going to put them all back together. And what I'm doing right now is in the last video, we took off the oil pan because we're changing this to rear sump. So I got to finish getting off our gasket, take this off because I have to remove this stud in the front here. And I'm actually about to hop in the Viper right now and head over to the dealership because I actually found a local dealership that has one of the bolts. So there's a combination of both. You'll see some of them in here um, that hold in our main caps. They just are a straight up bolt. And then this one has a stud on it, but because we're changing a rear sump, that will not work there. It'll hit the front of our pan. So I gotta change that back to a bolt, not a big deal. Um, so yeah, let's get this off completely. Let me get that stud out of there and then uh, we'll go for a little drive. Okay, so pretty cool actually. This does have ARP rod bolts. Um, and like I said, not like I'm completely a noob around this Mopar stuff, but they've been making a lot of changes as of late. So I just did a quick Google search and apparently uh, 2018 or so and up come with ARP rod bolts from the factory. So pretty cool if uh, that is happen to be the case. If not, somebody's been in here, but everything seems to be in good looking condition, you guys. I don't think we have any issues. We don't have any play, end play on any of these. Nothing slapping around, which obviously is a good sign. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this stud here, and uh, then we'll go pick up that bolt. All right, so working out really well, you guys. So without this stud in there, we're able to clear the front pan. So I'm going to go over and get that other bolt. So it's starting to shape up into something. So getting excited, you guys. <laughs> it's not much, but one step more in the right direction. So let's hop in the Viper. Let's fire this puppy up and uh, we'll go for a little rip, go get that bolt, and then uh, we can continue working on that. Let me get in here and get this part and we'll get back out of here. So we've got our bolt and we didn't get robbed. I actually managed to get out of here for under $10. So got one of our main cap bolts right there. You can see, let's get it back and get this sucker back together. Well, we're back. We've got our bolt. So let's go ahead and install this here. This is a torque to yield bolt. So 21 foot pounds and then 90 degrees on top of that. So we're going to install this sucker right here. And you can see it's the same as our other ones. So we're good to go. Let's get it in here and get that sucker in place. So there's the 21 foot pounds. Now we need 90 degrees. So from there to me, so let's give it the 90 degrees that it needs. Okay, there we go. Next up on the list is this. So we're gonna punch this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this little plug out from here and then we'll probably have to clean up this hole to be honest. She's looking a little nasty. So probably have to uh, get some sort of sandpaper in there and clean up this, uh, cause it's just 
normally it's just a uh, exposed steel kind of housing there and uh, hasn't had anything sealing it up. So let me knock out that plug. All right, didn't take much effort with the punch, but a bunch of rust came flying out of there. So let me clean up this little hole. All right, so I got the hole cleaned up and this is gonna be, I think our dipstick tube. We'll see if it works out. I'm not sure how it will work around, um, you know, these Hellcat heads and the supercharger and all that stuff. Worst comes to worst, we'll either manipulate this where we need it to, or there's an aftermarket one that we can pick up that's basically just a flexible one and you can put it wherever you want. What I do wanna check right now is the oil pan on here and see, make sure that everything clears, like this will actually go into our oil pan. I'm um, pretty sure it should, but I just want to double check because I'm not sure exactly how the TRX dipstick, if there might be a difference on that. We'll find out in just a second. All right, so dipstick seems to go through, so it doesn't bind on anything, it goes all the way in, so looks like our dipstick will work with this pan. Like I said, we might end up changing it to something, but at least we've got some kind of dipstick on here and uh, we'll be able to read our oil levels. So on to the next, I'm gonna take this all off. I was just test fitting stuff, of course. Um, we'll, we gotta put gasket maker, so RTV on the four corners. So wherever the front and rear seams are. So on all four corners, we're gonna put some RTV there. We'll put our gasket on, put our pan on and we can button up that and then uh, we'll move on to the next thing. All right, so I'm actually going to order a different gasket for this. So there's a different gasket and windage tree. They're integrated into one. I was actually talking to my buddy Clay Milliken about it, whether just to run this one or the other one. Um, but you'll notice here, there's a little bit of difference in the stampings. So this one here on our Hellcat pan had the reinforcement. I actually made a video about this with the Holly reinforcement, and it goes through those extra bolt holes on the outside of the block. So it adds reinforcement. You can see here this pan doesn't have it, um, which not the end of the world. We would add the external one, like the Holly piece, to give our structural integrity back. But you'll also notice there's a hole here, and you can see that dot, and this gasket isn't drilled out for it, which, again, not a big deal. You can drill it out, but you'll notice here that this gasket is actually kind of old, and it's like separating, and it's doing the same thing on this side too. So just for that reason, I'm gonna order the other gasket. I actually found uh, on eBay, somebody selling it for pretty cheap. So I'm gonna get the right gasket. We'll just wait for that to come in. It's not like this thing's gonna run today or anything. So for now, I'll just throw it back on there just so it's hanging and no dirt gets uh, into our crank area. I'll just throw it up and on there, but we'll end up uh, getting the correct gasket and putting it on here as well. Okay, so pans is temporarily back on for now. What we've got now here is we've got Permatex valve grinding compound. And then I also got one of these tools to spin it with. So I'm gonna take my valves. I'm not gonna go crazy on it. Like there's no big marks or anything in these, you guys. I'm just doing it just more out of precaution just so that we're all good and dandy here. So just gonna give them a, a light spin here. So if you guys don't know, this is called like lapping the valves. Where essentially this is just like a, a light compound. You put it on the face of the valve, you install it and that compound kind of just acts like a light grit and you use this to spin it in the actual seat and it just machines or kind of just mates the surfaces a little bit better on the actual valve itself so that's all we're going to do not going to go crazy just a tiny little bit just out of precaution since they're already off just make sure that they seal really good and then uh, we'll move on all right so here we go we got a little bit of oil we're going to put this on the actual valve stem so on here, since we're gonna be spinning it, just so it's a little bit lubricated, nothing too crazy. And the compounds, we're gonna take some of this. It's very like, very, very light paste. And we're just gonna apply it to the actual face. So just something like that. Like I said, nothing too wild. And with a different finger, don't use the same finger. Don't put the compound on your valve stem, but put oil there. We'll insert it. And I also got new valve seals, you guys, so we'll uh, swap those out after as well. And then we're gonna take this. 
a suction cup. You just put it on. Some people put it on a drill, but since this is so, I don't know, we'll see how we get on the first one. So you put it on, and you're gonna hear that sound. So we're just gonna look, listen for that sound to change. Okay, so you essentially just spin it around, you guys, and you'll hear like the sound change from like a coarser to like a more fine, barely noticeable sound. And what it does is, if I show you, I don't know how well the lighting is here, but this is the one I just did. That's the one I haven't done yet. So you can kind of see all little like patches and stuff. Hopefully you can see there versus this one's got a nice smooth surface. So it just kind of smooths all that out and gets rid of all the little inconsistencies. So we're gonna go ahead, do a bunch of them. We're just doing a really light job on it since it doesn't really, you know, doesn't need much and then now we'll move on. Okay, and if you guys can see the difference, this is the first one we did, and then these are the ones that we haven't done just yet. So, we're gonna go along, do all of them with their corresponding valves. So each valve that goes in its respective cylinder, we'll put it in, we'll give it a few spins, and then uh, we'll be on our way. All right guys, I'm not even gonna lie. I saw another YouTuber he took it off the stick and threw it on like a drill on low speed, but like this is like super slow. And this is one of these newer Milwaukee's, so it's pretty quiet. And you can tell the difference. So you get the job done a lot faster. You're not increasing the speed, but this thing is like, suction cups like constantly popping off. So with this, you can just apply light pressure while it turns. So you can hear the pitch of it change pretty quickly and you know that it's good. So watch, I'll do this one. I'll show you guys how much simpler it is to use this and uh, you guys can hopefully hear the difference. So there we go. And I am just putting the smallest dab of compound on this, you guys, nothing crazy. Just enough to kind of wet in the sides. I don't know how well you guys can see that. And then use my pinky, a little bit of oil on the actual stem. Slide this up and in here, like so. And watch, you're gonna hear it go from a coarse sound to a fine sound. And watch, I'm not gonna go fast. You hear that sound? You hear it going away and all you can hear is the sound of the drill. That's what we're looking for. I'll press on the stem. Yeah, so not like these ones needed much work, you guys. But you can hear the difference now. So there you go. That's about all we're doing, nothing crazy. And then we get that nice, clean edge on these, just like that. Okay, so the one cylinder is done, you guys, and you can see that I'm on this one. I just wanna stop for a second to show you guys like just the difference. So especially on the exhaust valves where there's gonna be carbon buildup and stuff. Let's see if this can focus. Like see that there, the camera decides to focus on it. Hopefully you can see that. See all like that just nasty stuff on the valve surface. Come on camera, do your thing. Hopefully you guys can see that. And you can see like, that's probably from me cleaning stuff up, but you can probably see it's like kind of gritty looking. And then after you do this process, there we go. So here's the one that we did. And you can see how it's a nice machined surface. Then if I get one of the ones that I haven't done yet, like check out how nasty that looks. And you can see the carbon is probably from me cleaning it, but look at the face there you can see. So definitely worthwhile to do. Again, having the faces, nice and smooth and machined obviously are gonna seal way better all right guys so a lot of good progress uh today so we've got our oil pan stuff figured out i've pretty much got the heads just about ready to go back together so i'm really happy that i chose to do the lapping uh compounds and get the valves lapped because just the way that they cleaned up uh, i really think it was worth the extra effort so probably would have been fine without it but going that extra step to make sure that we have uh you know a really good seal is uh, not a bad idea. The other thing you saw me doing too is I cleaned off all the carbon 
on these exhaust valves. Uh, that was a, another tip from Clay. So I was talking to Clay, and I always talk to Clay Milliken quite a bit, uh, just on this build stuff, since we're both gearheads. So thanks to Clay. He told me to try this out to get the carbon all off your exhaust valves. I mean, you can do it on any valve, but mostly just to get that carbon off. And what we did was throw it into a drill and then just use like your red scotch Bright pad, hold it there, and like they come out so nice looking, you guys. So like brand new. So my batteries both gave up. So I'm gonna wrap up this video and uh, I wanna get this video out to you guys, but a lot of good progress today. Like I said, pretty much uh, I just gotta clean up some stuff. So I just wanna, you know, clean off those valves, clean off the, the seats where we, you know, use the lapping compounds and then put our new valve seals and we can reassemble the heads. So probably in the next video, reassemble the heads and then hopefully get the heads on. Got brand new Mopar head gaskets, got brand new Mopar head studs. So all that stuff will go back together. So thanks for watching guys. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, check out the other videos that led to this point. Um, and we'll see you guys on the next video.